Welcome to Central Truth Broadcast. As we celebrate the Passion Week and Resurrection Sunday, as Calvert Dixon will take you to the Word of God, comparing the Jewish Passover festivals and feasts, and see how Jesus Christ fulfilled all of them. And I pray that this message will bring reassurance to your heart and encouragement as we face this unusual time. Remember at the end of the program to subscribe or like this channel if you have not already done so. Good day again all. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend as you celebrate the Easter weekend which is called Passover. I like to call it Passover because of um, theological reasons. The word Easter is only found once in the Bible, in the, in the King James, in the book of Acts. But really it's the Passover weekend and Jesus Christ has fulfilled the Passover. Now with that said, I want us to go into the Word of God. I know that we are celebrating this Passover weekend, or so to speak, the Easter, as most people affectionately call it. But we are celebrating it on the, some, you know, unusual conditions. We are in our homes. But I want us to look at this weekend. I just want to look at this well. The week the entire week leading up to this weekend which is the Passover week and we are going to look at how Jesus Christ fulfilled he is our Passover and how he fulfilled this week and all the ceremonial laws um, predicated to this week and um, here we will turn into the book of Leviticus chapter 23 you know that God gave Moses some prescribed laws that the Jews are to follow after they came out of the wilderness they were right there at Mount Sinai and in Leviticus chapter 23 um, it gave them some ceremonial laws, rightly so the book is called Leviticus after the Levites because it deals with a lot of sacrifices and a lot of it has to do with the priests. So here in Leviticus chapter 23, God gave the order of the feast. It starts with um, the several feasts that the Jews had to celebrate first feast was the Sabbath the Jews had to celebrate the Sabbath on the seventh day of each week after that they're supposed to rest but then it goes into another feast which is very important it is known as the Passover now in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 4 we are going to read some passages and we're going over into the book of Matthew. These are the appoint appointed times of the Lord Holy Convocation which you shall proclaim at the times appointed for them. In the first month, 14th day of the month, at twilight, is the Lord's Passover. Very important here now. Then on the 15th day of the same month, there is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. To the Lord, for seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any laborious work, but for the seventh day you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord, 
on the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall not do any laborious work. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When you enter the land which I am going to give you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring in the sheaf of the, the first fruits of your harvest to the priests. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord for you to be accepted on the day after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. Now on the day when you wave the, the sheaf, you shall offer a male lamb, one year old without defect, for a burnt offering to the Lord. Its grain offering shall then be to the tent of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil and offering by fire to the Lord for a soothing aroma with its drink offering a foot of a, a hind of wine until the same day until you have brought in the offering of your God. You shall eat neither bread nor roasted grain nor new growth. It is it is to be a perpetual statue throughout your generation in all your dwelling places. Now I am not going into the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 28 16 down to also down to 26 also also reiterate the different feasts that the Jews were to um, celebrate now I want to look at the Passover the Sabbath and what we call the wave offering or that the Jews were to celebrate um, or the, 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 the feast of first fruits. Now the Bible clearly says in Leviticus chapter 23 that the Jews, especially in verse 5, in the first month on the 14th day of the month. Now this month, when I said this month, the Jewish month all, um, falls between our months. Like for instance, the last half of March and the first half of April is one month. That's the Jewish month, the first month in the Jewish ceremonial calendar. And likewise, the last half of April, the first half of May is the second month. That's why sometimes Easter fluctuate between March and April. It all depends on various conditions because the Jews sometimes have, have a 13th month. It all depends on the, linear, the, 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 the lunar calen calendar and so on. And the Jews only have 360 days while we have 365. So it's all predicated on how these things work out. But Nevertheless, God instituted the Passover. So on the 14th day, which is the first day, that is the Sunday of the first month in the Jewish calendar was what we call the Passover. So we are saying we are celebrating Easter. The Jews right now are celebrating Passover. Same week, same thing co coincides. Now, let's turn over to the book of Matthew chapter 26, the book of Matthew chapter 26, and we are going to look at verse 17. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, you realize that, which is the Sunday, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? Now, they were supposed to, on the first day, according to the book of Leviticus and Numbers, 
they were supposed to have a holy convocation where they go to the priest and they offer a sacrifice. And it was a holy convocation. Now you look at the Bible, just like how the Sabbath was a holy convocation, the first day of the week after these feasts were also considered holy convocations too. Now, you will also find in Exodus when God said, on the first day you shall rest, it's a holy convocation. And it said, likewise, the day after is also a holy convocation. So even the Old Testament look at Sunday as a holy convocation. Now, here it is in Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 18 as we continue. And he said, go into a city to a certain man and said to him, the teacher say, my time is near. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples the disciple did as jesus had directed them and they prepared the passover in verse 20 now when the evening come jesus was reclining at the table with the 12 disciples and right there they began to eat the Passover. That's now the day after. So it was in Matthew chapter 17, the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus to prepare the Passover. And the next day, so they went and they prepared it. They had it prepared to tell them where to go. And the next day, that's when they were supposed to eat. The Passover or the feast that's begin the feast of unleavened bread. So Monday night they had what you call the feast of unleavened bread. And that's where they started to eat the feast. Um, contrary to popular demand, it was not the Sunday, it was the Monday, the 14th day after when they eat the feast of unleavened bread. And for the entire week, go right down from the 15th day. They were supposed to eat that feast. Now we're going to the gospel and we're going to see how Jesus Christ was filled everything during that week. Now, during that week, as I said, they were supposed to eat the feast of unleavened bread. They were supposed to offer bullocks and ram each day at the temple. So it was like the holy week, we call it the holy week in the Jewish calendar. Everything was... um predicated on that week because even after the first fruits you count 49 days and then the next day is what you call the day of Pentecost and then you have those are future boots and all these things and the, the day of trumpet and um, things like that the other feasts but now this is the holy week as I said Jesus Christ fulfill the weeks and I want to look at the Passover week the Sabbath and feast the wave offering feast or uh, the feast of first fruits. Now here is it, Jesus Christ in the gospel, as I said, when they were eating the Passover that night, that you could say Monday evening, they were in the upper room. And later on we know after they finished eating, they went into the garden of Gethsemane. Where Jesus was um, betrayed by Judas. And here we're going to look at some interesting thing. When we look at the movies and we look at all of that, it looked like Jesus Christ was tried in one day. And then he was crucified. No. The entire week from... That night in the Passover, Jesus Christ instituted the Lord's Supper now has replaced the Passover. We no longer celebrate the Passover. Now he said, this is a new commandment that I am giving you. Now of often as you, 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 you take this wine, you, you do it in remembrance of me. That was the institution of what you call the new covenant or the institution of the institution of the Lord's Supper. 
which replace the Passover feast because we don't need Jesus Christ is our Passover. We don't need bulls, lambs, and all these things. He is the, the Passover lamb. Now, it's very interesting. One time I went to Passover feast in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and it was so interesting and how it points to Jesus Christ. And I cannot understand why the Jews can't see Jesus Christ in that feast. But anyway, the entire week of the Passover, they were supposed to eat um, unleavened bread and, you know, drink wine and also not alcoholic wine, though, you know, when we look at the Bible, even drink was considered wine, you would not see drink in the Bible, you will see wine. But they were supposed to eat that and also offer the sacrifice daily in the temple. Now, Jesus Christ, we are going to see something. Jesus Christ was arrested in the garden. Then, he had at least, during that entire week, he had two trials by the high priest. He had two trials before Pilate. So that's four trials. And he had another trial by King Herod. So five trials Jesus had throughout the entire week while the Jews are eating the Passover Jesus Christ had five trials and different days he had these trials go right down to the last day which is the Friday Jesus Christ went into different courts he went into the court the religious court tried him he went into the court of the political court tried him but then all these courts especially the um the political court of king um of Pilate and also of Herod at the time those courts found Jesus innocent but only the religious court and I call the next one the court of popular opinion found Jesus guilty and sometimes even uh, as sad to say in our religious circles we do we do more injustice to Jesus even today than sometimes the secular world the secular world Pilate said I found no fault in him but Jesus Christ was crucified because of the court of popular belief and many times people are crucified not because of facts but because of the quote of popular opinion so to speak so the first thing we're going to look at in John chapter 18 John give you a description of the four trials the two before the two before the religious bodies and the two before um, Pilate so John chapter 18 John chapter 8, 20, um, 12 to 23, we're going to look at some verses right here. So John chapter 18, 12, Jesus Christ, he was betrayed in the garden, they took him, and this is the first trial. So, the Roman cohort... And the commander and the officers of the Jews arrest Jesus and bound him and led him to Annas first. You see where he went to? For he was father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was expensive for one man to die on behalf of the people look at that in their wicked scheme fulfilling prophecy he's saying one man should die on behalf of the people but they did not know that was the plan of God one man Jesus Christ should die on behalf of the people the sin of the entire world they thought you know what in this feast we need to one man should die it's supposed to be Barabbas, 
but we're going to today release a criminal and crucify Jesus because Jesus Christ is the only lamb sacrificial lamb who can take away the sins of the world so they went to Annas first in the evening remember they took him this is after the Gethsemane scene and they took him to Annas home Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas Annas was the previous high priest it believed that Annas had resigned that year and Caiaphas his son-in-law became the high priest but they also still considered Annas as a high priest in terms of respect. He was like um, a high priest emeritus, so to speak. So they, they, they took him to Annas' home first. And there he was tried. And at, in Annas' home, remember, that's where Peter denied Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ twice in Annas' home. Um, home and we go along verse 19 of chapter 18 now the high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching Jesus answered him I have spoken openly to the world I always taught in the synagogues and in the temple we are all the Jews come together and I spoke nothing in secret. Why do you question me? Question those who have heard what I spoke to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing nearby struck Jesus saying, is that the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify of the wrong. But if rightly, why do you strike me? So Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. So in the evening, he was first tried. Now this is the Monday evening. In the wee, late in the evening, he was first tried in Anna's home then he was sent to Caiaphas late that evening probably midnight and in the morning he was tried again by Caiaphas now so Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest in verse 24 so the first trial was the Monday night the second trial the Tuesday morning Now, verse 25, now um, Simon, right there now, at Caiaphas' house, denied Jesus Christ. That's the third time, and that's when the rooster or the cock crowed, and Peter um, was in remorse, and he understood exactly because what Jesus Christ said about him came to pass. Now, in verse 28, then they led Jesus from Caiaphas into the Praetorium. So Caiaphas, he went to Caiaphas' house. He stayed overnight till the morning. And they led him to the um, Praetorium. And it was early. And they themselves did not enter into the Praetorium. So that they would not be defiled. But might eat the Passover because the Praetorium was Roman and the Jews did not want to mix with, mix with the Roman during the High Holy Week, so to, so, 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 to, so to speak. Now, they brought him there. He was tried in um, Caiaphas' house. If you look in Mark chapter 15, you will see where Caiaphas tried him there. And then if you look also in Luke, he was also tried there in Caiaphas' house. But now, after he was tried in Caiaphas' house, Caiaphas took him and, uh, and sent him to Pilate. Now he is before Pilate. So, 
it says, Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas into the Praetorium, and it was early, and they themselves did not enter into the Praetorium. We read that, so they before Pilate now, here, Therefore Pilate went out to them, verse 29, and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you. So Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. Pilate said, Why bring him to me? You are God, you are Take him and judge him according to your law. The Jews said to him, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. You see, they didn't want to try him. They done already had, before Jesus Christ had a, a, a proper child, death was on his mind. It was already, um, you know, as I say, it was already, the, the, the fix was in. Death, but, but how do you know he deserved death? We cannot cruci we try the man. But they said, we cannot put any man to death. It is not, it is the law of Rome supposed to put someone to death to death. So Pilate said to them, take him yourself and judge him according to your law. The Jews said to him, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. To fulfill the words of Jesus which he spoke, signifying by what kind of death he was about to die. He, he, you know, it was already um, ordained by God he was supposed to die. The priests and the elders before they try him already said they're going to kill him without examine, exam, examining the man. So right here you could see this is a, what you call a kangaroo court. And Jesus Christ was sent there. Then therefore Pilate entered again into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you saying this on your own initiative or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew. Am I? Your own nation and your chief priest delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, um, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, then my servant would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Therefore, Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth, hear my voice. Pilate said to him, What is This is a very good point to end this first episode. Pilate asks in Jesus, what is truth? Not recognizing that he was looking at and speaking to the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus himself. I hope that you tune in to the other episode. We had to cut this Easter message in three parts because of the recording restrictions. If you have enjoyed today's episode and the content on this channel, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel and leave a comment.